Well, joining us now to talk about it, the impact of, uh, well, a substantial increase, John Graham, the senior fellow for the National Center for Policy Analysis. John, thanks for Skyping in today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. And, and John, the obvious question is, why has the cost of developing these new medicines increased so much? Well, as you say, it's remarkable. In a decade, going from about a billion dollars to $2.6 billion, I think there's two things. One is there are certain chemical and biological obstacles that researchers have hit, and it's just going to take some time to overcome them. Right now, medicine is in an era of becoming very, very personalized. So when you talk about, say, a type of cancer, lung cancer, an oncologist will say, well, there's not one type of lung cancer. Every year we determine there's more and more types of lung cancer, and we're trying to develop medicines that will hit very narrow targets. So, so the policy, sorry. No, so you're saying specialized medicine is what's driving up the cost. Specialized medicine, specialized medicine. And the public policy problem here is the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is really cranking up over the last decade the burden of conducting clinical trials, recruiting patients for clinical trials, getting your data through the FDA to approval is getting longer and longer, harder and harder, more and more expensive. And it's a risky business. The risk-adjusted rate of return that investors require to develop these medicines is pretty high. It's a pretty high hurdle rate. And it's now taking 15 years to develop new medicines and it's really a problem and we're seeing it uh, as you mentioned uh, health spending is not really out of control these days it's pretty tame but the specialized drugs that are coming out for cancer and some rare diseases are coming out with very high price tags and some people are saying well we need to put price controls on the pharmaceutical companies uh, but the real problem is a structural problem in the research and development enterprise well mindful of that though uh as we know, the concern is, gee, do these higher costs of drug development get passed along to consumers? Are, are we going to see an, an uptick there for our <clears throat> daily prescriptions? I think we will. And it's kind of a shame because just a few years ago, we were all excited to see a, a month's supply of generic drugs for $4 at the drugstore. And many drugs were coming to a price where it was just a... a a convenient out-of-pocket cost, but for very sick patients now, I think they're going to be really shocked with the price of some new prescription drugs coming up. And not to take our discussion into the whole general problem of Obamacare, but the structure of Obamacare, the type of policies offered in the Obamacare exchanges, for example, subject these patients to very, very high cost sharing for these new specialty drugs that have a high dollar price tag. And is that the structural problems that you were referring to? Well, the, these are structural problems in insurance design. Obamacare incentivizes insurers to discriminate against sick people, although the letter of the law says they're supposed to protect sick people. In fact, the incentives are the other way around. Uh, so we have an insurance design problem in Obamacare. Uh, but the point of the paper I was trying to get at here is that the FDA needs to really revisit how it governs and regulates clinical trials and its approval mechanism. Because when you're looking at a drug that is going to really be a miracle cure, Sovaldi is one that a lot of people have talked about for hepatitis C. It's a small patient population, but it is a miracle cure. So it's going to come at a high dollar price unless you get a dramatic increase in productivity of, of research and development. And the FDA is not helping right now. It's blocking and hindering productivity improvements in R&D. So what, it's not merely bureaucratic inertia, is it? I mean, when we're dealing with scientific matters, yeah. there, there has to be a level of testing and safeguards, but should there be a time limit imposed on the FDA to say uh, either fish or cut bait by a certain date once a medicine is uh, submitted for approval? Well, I've made a few recommendations in, in, in previous years. One is uh, that individual patients should be allowed to take the risk that they are willing to take a risk of. So if you have a rare disease that there's very few cures or maybe no cure right. available to you that's already approved by the FDA, uh, but there's an experimental drug out there, uh, someone like you or me might not want to take it because we are healthy. We're not willing to take the risk, but someone who's very, very sick might be willing to take that risk. 
and they should be more free to take that risk. Another thing we've observed is that uh, other countries, for example, Europe, the European Medicines Agency is in many cases faster to approve a new drug than the FDA is. So for people who are not willing to go out there and take a risk on an experimental drug, uh, but they might say, look, if the European regulator in London has approved it, it's got to be relatively safe, so they should be free to use those drugs as long as there's a proper warning that the FDA hasn't approved it, but the regulator in another developed country has approved it. So there's a portfolio of reforms, but the, the real reform is there is a problem here that the FDA regulates clinical trials basically the same way as it did in 1960. And we are much more sophisticated in statistical analysis now. We can adapt clinical trials as they proceed. We can make better use of real world data outside the clinical trial. Uh, big data is the term many people use. And yet the FDA is still using a 50 plus year old method and rule for determining how it validates and measures the clinical trials. So you mentioned insurance companies. Do you think yeah. insurers should cover the higher share of the price? Well, they have to take a very serious look at the value of the drug. And if the, if, if the benefit of the drug is not significantly better than other drugs uh, or other therapies, then I think, they, can, I think they, they really have a duty to their beneficiaries and the <clears> taxpayers <throat> as well, because the taxpayers now under Obamacare are subsidizing insurance. They have to take a very careful look. But many of these things, for example, Sovaldi and hepatitis C, there's no alternative. I mean, the alternative is an organ transplant. And no matter what the price of Sovaldi is, it's cheaper than an organ transplant. So uh, in the short term, I think we have to suck up these, these high prices, but we do have to take a real look at the productivity of R&D and make sure that the public policies that we're, we're moving forward in are going to reduce and bottom line, reasonable regulation, not excessive regulation. John Graham, thanks so much for your time. America's Forum will continue following this update.